Hello everyone. In today's video, uh, we're going to be doing two different things today. First of all, uh, you might notice that I sound a little different, and the reason for that is I did get myself a microphone on a stick, so hopefully I sound a little better than I normally do. Yes, some of those videos are going to be out of chronological order later on because of all this, but that's all right. The second thing is I wanted to demonstrate the relationship between WRA as well as doctrine settings in order to simulate different types of tactics. So let's take a look at our setup here. Basically what I have is I have Nellis Air Force Base, and uh, directly to the northeast of it, I have a handy-dandy sports stadium, as well as a single radar, which is going to be acting as our early warning. To the south, I'm going to go ahead and turn on God Mode real quick, you can see that we have a B-52D Strata Fortress, which has been tasked with blowing the stadium up. Uh, good news, though, it's just a fake stadium. It's been made out of basically plywood, so uh, you don't have to worry about anybody being there during that time. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and intercept this bomber a couple different ways using some different techniques, and it'll show you off some kind of the different ways you can play with it. So let's go ahead and get ourselves our interceptor. I'm going to go to aircraft real quick. The MiG-21, I'll use an MF. M just means modernized. F just means uprated, for those of you guys who are curious as far as what those meanings mean. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself a couple of these R3S missiles. So by default, let's go ahead and take a look at the doctrine window for this particular aircraft. It is designed so that when it engages a particular mission, it is going to use the loadout setting. So uh, what does that mean for us? Well, if we took a look at the MF, and we went down to the loadout setting, it says return to base after one engagement with, with within visual range weapons. Allow targets of opportunity with air-to-air -air guns. What does that actually mean? That simply says that it's going to go ahead and fire off its missiles, whatever its WRA is set to, and then immediately return to base. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the WRA is actually set to. So in this case, if I go down to the AA-2A, it's designed to launch a single round which means for the duration of the engagement, theoretically, we should only launch a single missile, and then we should be returning to base based on this particular thing. Now, there's other things you want to look at too, and that is the BVR engagement logic. This simply says that if I launch a missile, should I follow it straight in? Should I pull to the side and keep my radar in view? Or should I pull to the side, keep my radar in view, and then turn away from the missile? This is only really relevant if you have something like an AMRAM. Of course, we can say crank if possible. In this case, I'm going to follow missile straight in, for the purposes of this demonstration. So anyway, let's go ahead and give it a try. This is going to be just a straight automatic engagement. All right, there's our B-52. Actually, one other thing that I want to change real quickly is I want to go ahead and set it so that we are ignoring a flight of course. Looks good. Let me go ahead and ask it to engage the B-52. And off we go. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. I'm actually having a real tough time seeing everything because of Sentinel here. Let me shut that down real fast. Ah, much better. So our MiG-21 is going to come rushing towards this B-52. Now remember, it's programmed to make a single engagement, and theoretically, a single engagement should only involve a single missile based on what its WRA is set to. So there's the merge. He's going to come ripping around, pull a very, very, very aggressive turn there, come up behind the B-52. There's the single missile. There's the second missile. Oh, that one, that one did not track at all. And he's going to try to close within, and he gets out of there as fast as he can. So that is going to be basically his idea of an engagement. Yeah, you can see right now his static is shotgun. So now he's going to head home after almost getting shot down. Of course, he doesn't use his cannon or anything like that. And you have a fairly successful engagement overall. Again, that entire engagement was one target being attacked with one group of missiles. So let's actually reset the scenario real quickly. And uh, let's change things around a little bit. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to get myself my MiG-21 again. Looks good. And I'm going to change his orders. Actually, the first thing I got to do is I got to tell everybody to please ignore the plotted course when attacking. I'm actually going to save the scenario this way. All right. So let's go ahead and go back to his doctrine window. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell him to follow the missile straight in. And I'm also going to tell him to launch all missiles at the same time. I believe we have an option. Use all weapons. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and set that quickly. Come down here. So that quickly, obviously, we are not going to be engage cruise missiles with this aircraft, but we'll do the best we can. All right, we'll go ahead and send them this way. There's our B-52 engage. Let's watch what happens this time. Remember, the only thing we've really changed is how many missiles to fire at a given target. So our MiG-21 is going to merge again. Going to go nice and wide. He's going to go pull that really, really high G turn, staying well within the range. Of course, you've got to watch out for the tail gun on a B-52. I wouldn't be surprised if I accidentally get shot down. Now, watch what happens when we do our actual engagement. A little closer, got to get within the DLZ. Oh, that is like Tailgun City. Make sure I've ordered him to attack. 
And here comes the cannon as opposed to the missiles. There's our missile. <laughs> so you're probably saying, um, that's, that's not really what she intended there. He basically only fired a single missile and he used his gun first. Yeah, that's because if you took a look at his actual doctrine, it is programmed to allow, let's go ahead and show you this one. It is basically programmed to allow to use air-to-air -air guns. So that did not work either, even though we made that teeny tiny change. So let's go back and uh, do that again. We'll go back to setting this uh, guy's doctrine real fast. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to tell him to go ahead and fire any of his weapons and then disengage immediately. He's not going to be allowed to use his air-to-air -air weapons. We'll follow the missile straight in. Uh, we already have that all set well for us. We're going to go ahead and tell him to use all rounds. Come down here, set that to use all rounds as well. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Uh, one unit's firing, makes sense. Uh, that looks good, that looks good. Uh, we're going to be able to confirm his range. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Let's try it out this time. And I'll watch this. Notice, he immediately returned to base. So you're probably going, wait, what? Well, think about it for a second. His, web, his WRA, I should say, let me actually call it up real fast so you can see it again. His WRA, and again, this is something that you'll probably do and probably get confused with at some point, is basically going to be set, uh, let's go ahead and go to Doctrine, that it uses beyond visual range weapons. Ah! So you got to be very, very cautious of that. Otherwise, you'll get behavior that looks like that, and I'm sure everybody's done that at one point. So let's go ahead and try that again. Again, we're editing this one's doctrine individually here. We're going to say one engagement with within visual or strike weapons. Disengage immediately. By the way, we can order it to only fire guns too, which is always fun. Let's go ahead and uh, use, uh, well, we'll use two this time. We'll be a little bit more conservative. You never know if you need one of those on the ride home or something like that. Come down here, set that to two. Come down here, set that to two. We're going to go ahead and follow that weapon straight in. Everything looks good. Good, 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 good. All right, watch this. And now I've got my MiG-21 again. And again, this is representing almost like a hit and run, if you want to think about it another way. I'm going to go ahead and there's my target. Go ahead and order an attack. And let's see what happens this time. So my MiG-21 zips up. He's going to be taking his super duper high G turn. He's got to come ripping in here. He's got to get within the DLZ of that weapon. Keep in mind, a B-52 is a very distributed target. You know, you're not talking a single tailpipe you're going after here. So that actually complicates this a little bit. He's approaching him carefully, the B-52. Of course, this is super dangerous because his closing rate is very, very low. There's nothing stopping me from coming in here and doing that, because that'll decrease the closing rate, but now he's going to have less time to go ahead and complete his engagement. But it's going to make it the gunner's job on the tail have a much tougher time. So there goes some cannon fire. There goes a missile. And he's going to go ahead and finish up his thing. And he's going to spin around, fires another couple missiles, uh, does no damage, fires another couple missiles. Doesn't seem to do much damage there. Now he's got to head back to base because he's out all the good stuff. So you're probably sitting there going, well, I thought he was just going to fire two missiles and run home. You're not wrong again. Again, this is a great, great demonstration of how tricky this can be. So if you take a look back to that weapon state again, you'll notice it's one engagement or strike weapons, but it allows targets of opportunity with air-to-air -air guns. So that's the bit that you've got to watch out for. So one thing you could do too is you could order it to go ahead and only use 25% of relevant weapons and then immediately disengage. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. As a matter of fact, we'll try that out real quick. Let's go back to Testa. We'll go ahead and load this one up. Grab our MiG-21. Let's go ahead and edit its doctrine again. Again, this is a common kind of a problem, and you'll see exactly how this happens. Right, it doesn't really matter because we're not using those sort of weapons. Weapon state pre-planned. We're going to order it to go ahead. If you fire a quarter, disengage immediately. Uh, no targets of opportunity, that's set to no. WRA, of course, if we're only going to be firing a quarter of our weapons, we'll do those two. That looks pretty good to me, that looks pretty good. Good, 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 good. Okay, beautiful. Let's give it a try. Give him a second, I'll start sending him down that way. There's our B-52, engage. Our high G turn, comes up around. He should fire a quarter of his weapons at that B-52. Notice he fired both. Just like we told him to. But now notice, he's going to come kind of wide here. Still completing his engagement. And now he's returning to base. You're probably sitting there going, wait, what? Why did he choose to return to base at this point? 
Well, a quarter of his weapons is a quarter of his total weapons. Five. That would be nine. That would be ten. A quarter of that is going to be three, which is precisely how many of his weapons he deployed in this particular scenario. So you can see how that can be very tricky to go ahead and navigate. You know, there's nothing in the universe, of course, stopping me from doing this. I can unassign him real quick, and I can order to attack, but you're going to notice my status over here on the right is going to tell me that he's like, no, I can't do that. Notice I've aborted his RTB. And now he's going to do the best he can with what he has here. Go swing, try to get back on the guy six again. Hopefully he gets there before the B-52 gets to that sports stadium. Sneaking up on him, picking up some speed. Of course, we can always use manual too. Um, we're going to give him everything, and we're going to give him everything. Go ahead and let that happen. And it's done. Notice he fired his cannon and the missile simultaneously. So again, manual control like that does come in handy. Now, of course, we can order it to RTB, and now the mission is accomplished. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense as far as the WRA related to those kind of things. Uh, when you're going to be doing head-on engagements, it's usually a really, really good system to go ahead and try something like that. As a matter of fact, while we're at it, we might as well do a quick head-on engagement just to kind of show you what I mean here. So I'm going to trade out our MiG-21. We're going to go ahead and swap that out for an F-14. We're going to use one of the new ones. F-14 looks pretty good to me. Of course, it's cheating a little. We'll do heavy bar cap. We'll go ahead and set your doctrine. I'll modify it real quickly. WRA. We're going to be interested in the Phoenixes here. We're going to fire everything. Now, remember, this particular aircraft can guide multiple of these simultaneously. So this is going to be kind of a cheap shot here. We'll go over here. We'll say uh, weapon state RTB. We want to go ahead and set it so that it basically does one engagement with beyond visual range weapons and gets out of there, which is for whatever reason we need it in this particular scenario. Everything else is looking good. I'll go ahead and allow it to use this radar because it's going to need it for this particular case. We're going to be launching all weapons once you get into range. That, of course, is going to be AM-54s. And to make things interesting, we're going to crank and drag. Order him to go this way. Go ahead, F-14, do your thing here. It's going to come swinging around. Oh, boy. That's a lot of airplane. There's our target. Um, we do not want to engage right away. As a matter of fact, I'm going to cheat to get us a little bit closer. Because you don't want to be firing those Phoenixes at that kind of a distance. You're never going to do any damage. So now I'm going to go ahead and order the F-14 to fire. I'm actually going to change his status here to speed up the firing just a teeny tiny bit. So they're acquiring him on radar, speeding up to acceleration. Notice it says right in his status that he's engaged offensive. And he's fired. Notice he's going to be launching all of his AIM 54s, just like we asked him to do a moment ago. Now, the cool thing about an AIM 54 is he can actually drag, which is really cool. As a matter of fact, I'm going to delete this point here because I want to see if he's going to go ahead and do that. Is this the version of the AIM 54 that actually has active radar on board? Let's check. It does, but it has to get within 10 nautical miles in order to actually work. All right, speed up time a little bit here. So now watch what our F-14 is going to do in a second. It looks pretty clean. Active radars go. Okay, but the eight. Okay, gotcha. So this guy can't turn away until this last weapon is locked onto him. In which case, then he will pull himself away. Once the BVR attack is complete, yeah, there it goes. He's just going to turn around and come right back home, even though he still has AIM 7s on board. So you can see that is a really dynamite way to make your intercept missions a little bit more effective if you have ammo to waste. All right, so hopefully this was helpful, and hopefully I sound a little bit better than I did before. A little weird talking to a thing in front of me rather than a headphone, but I'm sure you guys will forgive me for that one a little bit later on. So this should be pretty straightforward. Again, this is very similar to the Doctrine WRA. It's just really important that you can see why your missions aren't launching or why they're not behaving the way they are. You really have to double check that every single time because you're going to find more often than not your WRA is not set correctly or your Doctrine is not set correctly, and that's why they're not engaging. So it's just kind of a little heads up. Other than that, enjoy.